Hey everyone, my name is Danilo Petrovic. I'm Ilya Marchenko. I'm Janis Kuda. I'm Evgeny Donsko. I'm Henry Laksan. I'm Peter Turepko and you're listening to the Game to Love podcast. Hey, welcome back, tennis fans. Sorry to keep you waiting. Just having a few small technical issues there before the start. But we're here, and we're here to talk about the big final. Uh, this time it's on the women's side, and it is Paula Badoza, of all people, who has made it through to this Indian Wells final to face Victoria Azarenka, the player with the saddest button on GTL, unfortunately. Maybe she'll get a more happy one for the final. Who knows? Ah, Maybe. so have you given us a little clue? Is there going to be a new Azarenka well, button? I might have to do it, just because I don't know if I can hear that all the way through the final. Yeah, so yeah, like you said, two women in the final. Um, Azarenka, probably more of a favourite get in there. But even that, I'm a bit surprised. I think she had a really tough section. She yeah. was stuck in the section with Halep, Raducanu, um, and a lot of other really big names as well. It's been a very fascinating Indian Wells. The conditions, I think, have played a massive factor, and that's why we're seeing different players really progress. It's not really playing like a typical sort of hard-court event. Um, yeah. There's a lot of characteristics with clay, and I think these slower conditions have suited people like a Paula Badoza. And, Let's get straight into it. Um, maybe we'll start with her because she is the girl who I have so much to talk about um, for, really, because her style of play is a bit different to a lot of the others on tour. I've been watching. We didn't get the privilege of watching it live because I know we was out having yeah. having the time of our lives. Um, yeah. <laughs> but Badoza, I just think her style of play is something which it can go very far because it's not all necessarily trying to hit winners and. Um, real power it seems to just be a lot of con a really good consistent ground strokes and she's got a brilliant defense and when there's a player attacking her she seems to be able to find a way to get back into the point and then find the winner and generate that and listen let's let's bring some things up from her she's sure. saying here Badoza mentally I think I'm very confident I'm believing every point Every day I'm working very hard as well I'm progressing on a little bit of everything and that's why uh, and that is what making my level go up. And that's why I'm in a final and playing against the best in the world. Obviously, she's just beaten Ons Jabur, one of my favourite players. Ons, for me, she went to the drop shot a little bit too much. I didn't think that was the best version of Ons Jabur I've seen. I thought she was slightly fatigued. She wasn't hitting with the same level of power. She still showed an awful amount of fight. I think she saved yeah. about four match points before the final one was converted from Badoza. I was just really impressed by Badoza's style of play. It just seemed to be high percentage tennis, knowing what she's doing um, and just was able to sort of grind and, and wear down on Jabur. Yeah. And I think the way Badoza plays, she's got such a long life in tennis. And I think being the, the, the WTA tour, which can be a bit unpredictable, I think she can flourish in that kind of environment because she reminds me a little bit. She's got characteristics of, say, Kladjikova or Ashley Barty, which is pretty yeah. consistent tennis. Very. No, I totally agree with you. I think that this year is sort of becoming a breakout year for Badoza. And we saw uh, glimpses of, of it earlier in the year. I know that she's one that who is uh, one of your favourites. I know that you love the Spaniards. You love the clay quarters. We saw her. She had a little run at uh, Wimbledon. But at the French Open, obviously, she got to the quarterfinals, went out to Zidansic in three sets. Yep. But she's been... Doing it on the hard courts. She uh, did well in Cincinnati. She she managed to beat Sabalenka on hard courts. She beat Ribakina on uh, the hard courts. Only yeah. went out, I believe it was an injury that took her out against Pliskova eventually. But in this tournament, ever since that first match, she hasn't dropped a set. And it just goes to show these conditions, I think it's going to take a very, very good Azarenka to beat her. Uh, Badoza's looked more convincing than Azarenka for me in her lead up to this final. And she seems to be getting stronger. She's hard hitting as well. So I think Azarenka will be used to that after the Ostapenko yeah. match. But still, like you said, consistency is key. 
And consistency is what uh, Badoza does so well. She's beaten, obviously. I don't think it's necessarily even the big hard hitting for her because she's not that powerful. I think her forehand's one of her best shots. And if I'm honest, when I watch her, you're going to probably laugh. She is what I model my game off of. If anyone had to say, what do you like? How do you strive to play or who do you play like? I would say a Badoza. Obviously. <laughs> you've probably seen how I play because you've watched Challenge JG. You're mm-hmm. thinking, what's he on? Is he definitely he's on some <laughs> kind of drugs? But I mean, if I watch what she, the way she plays, she's everything I, I would aspire to be in a tennis player. And that, that's not the case for everyone. But I watch all of her shot selections, and I think that's exactly what I want to do. Um, obviously, not everyone would say the same. Uh, not everyone's style, but I watch her style, and I think that's perfect. I love it. Um, just looking through the route and who she's played. We've not covered many of them, unfortunately, but you can see the, the type of names she's beaten. Coco Goff, straight yep. sets. Kladchikova, straight sets. Angelique Kerber, straight sets. And then Ons Jabur. So she's coming into this final, which is her, I believe, is it the first Spaniard to get to an Indian Wells final? I think we've got another yeah. stat for that one. Let me just bring these ones up. There we there go. You she's go. into one her second. first hard court final and second final of the season. I believe the first one was in, um, I don't know if you've got that. I think it was Serbia. Uh, Bear with me. That's I just, just that's off the top of my head. I think it was on Ser- in Serbia, and she won her first title, which was this year. Yes, um, and then Paula Pedosa's looking to become the first Spanish woman to win uh, the BMP Paribas Open, and she's the first Spanish woman to make the Indian Wells final in 25 years. Conchita Martinez was a two-time uh, finalist in 96 and 92, so it's amazing what she's doing. Yeah, and can she go one step further? We'll have to wait and see. I mean, I'm super excited to see what uh, she's only 23 years old uh, at the moment. So she's got the whole of her career ahead of her for me. Um, yeah. I'm I'm super excited to see what the, the world has in store for Badoza. I think uh, she's knocking on the door now for the top 20. I think yeah. that she can, it's definitely achievable goal for her. Maybe even top 10 if she continues like that type of trajectory. I think she's... I think she has a good chance of winning this tournament. I'm not going to lie to you. I well, think that the, the final, mate. So, of course, she's got a good chance. And in terms of top top 20, I would go one step further. Top 10 next year. I think that's going to yep. be her benchmark. I think she's definitely capable of doing it. Um, in terms of winning this event, she's got one lady in her way. And a lady who has some good experience here at Indian Wells. Of yep. course, Victoria Azarenka. She's oh, had... Yeah. She's had a bit of a troubled career in recent years of injuries and struggling to be fit for events. Uh, we've seen a bit of everything, but I feel like really, um, was it post COVID when we had the uh, US Open that first one, or was that during yes. COVID? Yeah, the one, just... the one where she played against uh, Osaka. That's uh, yeah, I, yeah, I believe that was just post, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I'm... I'm losing track of COVID times and not, but it's definitely in recent years one of the most recent US Opens in which she lost to. Asaka. I thought that whole period she was amazing. She was looks like she was she, well. She looked like unstoppable. She was going from hard courts to the next day playing on clay and was playing great as well. Um, I think yeah, she's she, she's finding that kind of form right now mm. and she's looking really good. And against Ostapenko, we need to give Ostapenko some praise because I actually yeah. think she was the better player in that match. Yeah, and I would agree with more or less quote unquote what she said after the match. Yeah, I know we do have it there. Let me see, is in this next one? Oh, that's just showing uh, some other bits. I think it was this one. Yeah, so she was saying, I was, a, I was a little bit unlucky. I think I'd have, I could have won the match in two sets. I was playing more against myself today. I think it's my game. What I was doing wasn't like she was doing something specific. And you can see in more detail, you can see what Ostapenko actually said. I, she said, I mean, it was in general probably a good match, but I feel like I was a better player today i just missed some balls like in deciding moments i was a bit unlucky i think i was playing better and aggressive today she was more like defending yeah if couple balls i would be lucky i think i could win the match actually i think i could win the match in two sets i was playing more against myself so that's the full quote and i think it's like that a lot i agree i I do agree i thought ostapenko was incredible that first set probably the best tennis we've seen all tournament it was unplayable she would have beaten everyone doesn't matter who was put there you can put a Serena Williams in good form. Ostapenko most likely would have beaten her in that first set because it was like a faultless set, faultless set of tennis. She was phenomenal in that. Um, but she did slow down a little bit. And I think the, she's probably getting a bit too on her high horse towards um, saying she could have done it in two sets because in that second set, there seemed to be a few more errors creeping in. 
And the same error kept happening. She kept going into the net on the forehand side. The backhand looked very strong. But there was just the same mistakes repeating themselves time and time again from her. And that's what she needs to eradicate. We know when she hits the ball cleanly and well, she's one of the best hitters in the game. Unfortunately, yeah. not consistent enough. And it just that was that that's, that was the unraveling. And I thought Azarenka, what she showed was so much fight and experience. She anticipated extremely well. And I mean extremely. Uh, to generate, I think, match point, she um she anticipated a backhand uh, cross court. She anticipated it was and volleyed it into the open court. And I don't think many players would have done that. That is all because she's played tennis for so many years. She's reading the game well. And Azarenka in this final is a dangerous entity. It doesn't matter who's going to be there. She's just got that winning mentality, I yep. feel. She is indeed. Uh, I was just going to just uh, take a little look through. Uh, obviously, this is just, just to show you who she's beaten on the route, on the route there. Uh, as you can see there, we got Magda Lynette. Uh, she didn't even have to complete the match in that one. Yep. But it was that tough section, wasn't it? Like we said, with Radu Kanu in there, with uh, uh, Kvitova. And Kvitova there, and Halep, she was in there as well. She, well, she, she got to avoid both of them. Yeah. Because of very, Sasnovich. <laughs> well, Sasnovich, she was a sort of the surprise package, wasn't she? Uh, in that first week, yep. she beat Halep and Radu Kanu in straight sets. But that goes to show how well Azarenka's playing and probably helps her be in Belarusian too. She probably played her more times off the court, probably practiced with her, I'm sure, Sasnovich. So she just has more experience than her. Uh, and to beat Pagula, I mean, Pagula was having a great tournament. Yeah, Pagula was one some people were touting to potentially go on and win this tournament uh, after the way she started it, but shut down once again. And it's only Ostapenko, the... The person who we've said time and time again, she can beat you or she can beat herself. So it's that she's that type of player. She's that good or she's that bad. Sometimes you see her hit fifty winners and then maybe fifty unforced errors the next set. So it's sad when she's playing badly, but it's blooming amazing when she's playing well. Ostapenko. Vance sums it up nicely. Biggest problem with Ostapenko, she's got no plan B. She lives and dies by the sword. She certainly does. Yeah. There was a lot of times in this match she was actually a, a better than Azarenka. I'd say on the whole it was a good match. Just some little errors at costly moments or the big points. And Azarenka capitalised every single time. And she is going to be facing Paula Badoza, both coming into it in good form. I think they both have the ability to, um, to play some passive tennis at times. I think we could see some longer rallies. It could be quite a long final as well. It could easily go the yeah. distance, three sets and, and some, maybe a tie break to end it because it's difficult to to really predict. I think the one thing you've got to go to is it's going to be a sort of experience versus inexperience. Yep. Um, but then what does that really mean? Um, no... if, if Paula Badoza mm. steps it up again, I think she is the favourite. Yeah, there's no head-to-head -to, -head to go off either. They never yep. played each other before. And it makes it even tougher to decide our predictions uh, because sometimes uh, it, there's bogey players for anybody and you could have played them three times, lost three times. That's going to sway our decision. This one, we've got literally nothing to go off. Yep. Only their form in this tournament, which is normally played at a different time of the year. And now we're playing it uh, the back end of the year and the conditions seem to be suiting uh, both of these players much better at this time of the year. It's pretty crazy. Even though I wouldn't say Azarenka, she would be like the, the biggest like hot, uh, clay court threat, let's say. I still think her game's that good in, in America for some reason. I don't know what it is about. When she's in America, she seems to just be have an edge on her competitors. Remember, she did so well in that Cincinnati tournament leading up to the US yep. Open yep. when she, uh, it was going to be. And after she was gonna... as well, at like Roland Garros, because Roland Garros has yep. played after, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. I just think there's just something about this time of year, Azarenka playing in America, she, she just knows how to get it done. And you saw it against Ostapenko, and that was somebody I thought was nearly unstoppable in this tournament. Yeah. Proved me wrong, Azarenka. She stepped up. Yeah, it's uh, good to see how much she actually cares as well. Yeah. I feel I feel like someone like Azarenka who's done it all. She's been around for a while. There's so much fight and desire there still. Um, I don't know if you, I, I watched all the highlights and in that um 
that second set when she took it, that was some loud roar, like a real big thumping roar from her. And that just, I think that's beautiful. The crowd seemed to be on her side more so, uh, which was kind of to be expected. And she played her part to the crowd and was really getting up for it. And she's going to be looking pumped going into this final. I think, I'm not sure what the odds are. I don't know if you've got them there. I'll yeah, be interested to see who the, who the, who the favourite is because I'm not so sure. It is Azarenka. She's at okay. a 1.66. Oh, wow. And uh, Badoza a 2.2 coming that into the final. That surprises me a little bit. Yeah, different bookmakers may vary. I think some of them have got a 1.8 to Azarenka, 2.18 or something, the 2.1 maybe onto the Badoza. But Azarenka is the favourite on all bookmakers. Yeah. yeah, shout out to one of our patrons, Bill R, here saying, uh, someone said Ostapenko, plan A, hit ball hard. Plan B, <laughs> hit ball harder. Definitely. Um, <laughs> we're not going to see either our plan A or plan B in the final because she wasn't able to get there. But let's have a look at uh, Azarenki. And this is six of her sort of previous uh, yeah, Masters. Masters titles. Yep. And you can see 2009, Miami versus Serena. That was a very dominant one. Uh, she did the same thing against Sharapova then two years later. Similar scoreline. Again, Indian Wells against Sharapova. Uh, China Open, Sharapova again. Indian yep. Wells, Serena. <laughs> so she, likes, uh, she likes a few of the big dogs. And then you've got two, 2016, Kuznets of her. Another big name. Yep. So she's done it against the, some of the very best. America, this one man. will have to be against Badoza. Um, a bit of a different name, but we could be looking back at Badoza's name and say eight years and thinking, oh, it's another big champion. Well, I was just going to bring this in just to, for us to have a quick look at as well. Some of uh, Badoza's record. Well, it's uh, all come together in 2021. I think it shows yeah. it there quite evidently. Yeah. You can see the Masters event. Prior, there was nothing at all. It was basically nothing. All of a sudden, 2021, she's come to life. And this is this is, this is is her. This is the best version of her we've, we've ever seen. Can 2022 be better? I think it can be maybe the same level, which I think would be better, would be, well, better than what it has been. So if she can just maintain this level for a few years, I think it's great. And then maybe start pushing on 2023 and, 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 and go from there. But you never know. She could even do something even more special next year and go and win a whole Grand Slam or something. Who knows? I mean, I had touted her to get to the final of the US Open. I, that's how much I believed in Paola yeah, Badoza. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't to be, but she's now she's now showing it. Now I didn't put her through that far. Now she's showing us what she is actually made of, and that's the Badoza that I thought could turn up at the US Open. She yeah. didn't, but these courts, slightly slower, so suits her game down to the ground. The clay quarter, the Spaniard, and I think... If this is the sort of tournament which she's going to do well in, I, I, well, we know she's going to do well in Madrid. We know that she's probably going to have late runs in a roll on Garros and stuff like that. I think that is a guaranteed thing yeah. for Badoza for me. Um, and it could be interesting. Somebody like a Klaichikova as well. I think those type of players, super consistent. That could be the future. Obviously, we've got Sviantec. She's just the power hitting yeah. style. Ultimately, if those players don't turn up, players like your Badozas and Krajikovas, they're yeah. the ones who get into the latter Listen, stages. If Iga misses more than she gets in, Badoza beats her. And can you yeah. say the same about a lot of other players? And that's why it is a fascinating dynamic we're going to now see on on tour. Let's throw in Emma Raducanu, Leila Fernandez as well in the mix. The women's tour is in a very healthy place. And we, we know that. And that's why we've covered probably more women's matches this event than any other event we have on Game to Love. And it's not yep. by coincidence. We chose their matches because they were more exciting at the time. And I think the women's game's in a good place. And Paula Badoza, she's going to certainly be right at the front of all of that. She definitely is. I'm a little bit conscious on the time just because I know that we've got Cam Norrie and Grigor Dimitrov waiting in the wings. We are going to be covering that match. So make sure you join us for that one after this pod. But it's predictions time, JG. It's time for everybody to find out who you have winning the final and in what way and what method do you see them winning it. Have you got a graphic maybe we can put up? Uh, I'm not sure. Let me see. I'm not sure if I, I do. this one Matt. at the bottom does. We'll use TikTok tennis. Oh, it's not really. It's just... Uh, it's just Azarenka. Unfortunately, I don't think that we do. Unless I bring up just something from uh, from Flash. That's about it. But anyway, let me come off of that and then I can bring up another graphic for you. If not, I'll let you have a little look and I'll give, be giving my one anyway. So 
This is how I see it going. Azarenka Badoza is the final this year. I'm going to be going for Paula Badoza to win the map to win the title. I think she's going to win Indian Wells. I've just been I've just been a little bit more impressed and not by much, just a little bit more. Um how it's going to happen, I think it's going to go all the way to a third set. It's going to be a really close third set. It's maybe not going to be a tie break. I'm going to go 7-5 in the third. Uh, Paola Badoza to win the whole thing. She's even money, not the favourite. Azarenka with the experience. I think it's time for a, a young breed. And looking at these conditions, we should have probably... Um, I feel like we should have considered the fact that the courts are playing like they are when we was making our predictions. We didn't, we didn't, wasn't really aware. I think it's difficult yeah. to always know before the tournament begins. And that is uh, something that's quite tricky. We did say that they were going to be playing slower due to the time of year, but I didn't yep. realize it was going to be like this and really have that much of an impact like it has. If I'd have known, Bedoza really is sort of a, a solid pick to pick to go far. And she's, she's, she's done the business here. I think she takes it one step further, beats Azarenka. Uh, maybe even Azarenka takes the first set and then Badoza wins the next two. Or it could be, um, I'm trying to work it out, what I'm going to stick with. I think I'm going to not go, I'm going to go with Badoza first set, Azarenka second and Badoza third. Right, JG gets his one in. He's going Badoza in three. Uh, Badoza for me sounds a little bit like Bulldozer. Uh, and I've got a feeling that's what she's done to the opposition in, in Indian Wells. And I know that I alluded to, they've never played each other before, these two players. Azarenka, the type of player who relies on experience, picks up little snippets of every time she's played different players on court, and she's able to convert that into victories. She hasn't played her before. Badoza looks in good form. I think that she can't work her out in time, and Badoza wins in straight sets. Ooh. It's that's my prediction. So so we've gone for the exact same now um, for the men's semis, I believe. And now the final here. Slightly different on the men's, I think, didn't we? I thought we went at the same. Did we, we had Basasvili winning. Right? Oh, yeah, but in a slight... And then slight... the other one, did you have um, Dimitrov as well? The sets were different. I th uh, no, I had Nori. Oh, okay. So we did go head-to-head yeah, -head yeah. on that one. So that was one where we did differ. I think what Romare says here, Badoza will get many balls back to Azarenka. Azarenka must not try end points too early during rallies unless she knows it's a winner. That is going to be the key. I think Badoza is going to get everything in play. Azarenka could struggle a little bit. And she's, and ultimately, I think Badoza is going to be able to uh, just sort of outplay Azarenka. I think she's got the youth on her side. And if it is to go to distance, she may be a little bit fitter when it matters. Have we covered any of Badoza's matches before? Um, I'm not sure if we do have. Maybe Might be one, I forget, but I, I, yeah, I'll have to look back. I, I can't remember. I, I know can't Liam remember here. It. He's going for Azarenka in free. Shout out to Liam, another one of our patrons. How are you doing, Liam? Let us, let, let us know in the chat, guys, who do you think is going to win? How do you think it's going to happen as well? Uh, we'll read a few out if you, if you put your predictions in the live chat. Yeah, uh, I think there's a lot of people who are going to be going for three sets here. I think it warrants it. Uh, the only reason I'm not is just based upon the reasons I gave. I just think that she might catch a cold like, uh, and just she won't work her out in time. That's it. <laughs> Liam, what's, did you say patron or Patreon? No, I think he's saying, did you say Patron? Oh, <laughs> oh did I? Say, definitely didn't say Patron. Get, <laughs> get that out. Get that away from me, Liam. <laughs> Definitely yeah, I think not. Ben's had a few too many Patrons of late. Gosh, flashbacks of Patron uh, from the <laughs> other night. God, dear. That was uh, terrible. Yeah, I even can't read now. This, that's what it's done to me. <laughs> he didn't oh, even God. get it. No. Uh, we've got Marie here, TL, saying Badoza in two. First set tie break and then something like 6-4. Fair enough. Um, RS guy in for Vika, 6-love, six 6-1. Six I'm not sure if that's serious, but he's really going big. On uh, Azarenka here. Wow. And shout out to Romer for the super chat. Here's Romer. It uh, means the world to us. Thanks for supporting the channel. And he's saying, good entertaining analysis, guys. Keep it up. Yeah, we'll do our best, man. Uh, we're always here just sharing our passion for tennis and trying to give you uh, silly thoughts at times on the players and what we think is going to happen. And yeah, listen, stay here to watch some of the matches with us because we're going to be watching both finals 
Um, we've got some semi-finals coming up very soon as well, which we, I'm aware of the time, so we're going to head off soon. Uh, but shout out on that. Shout out to Ramir. And we'll see you guys very soon for another live watch along. This time, semi-finals. Grigor Dimitrov, Cam Norrie. You've got to be there, guys. Indeed you do. See you there in about five minutes. See you there.